Hey guys, hope you're all doing good in these opening weeks of lockdown season. Um, today we're looking at PlayStation Now's game library, making the list, the only list you'll ever need for PlayStation Now. PlayStation Now has the biggest game library of all the video game subscriptions, and it's actually not even close. It breezes by Uplay Plus's rather pedestrian offering of 120 games and EA Origin Access's 270 games. It's far beyond even Xbox Game Pass Ultimate's 418 games. The PS Now 2020 game list has over 800 games that you get for $8.99 a month. And if you're committed to the service, I would suggest getting either 3, 6 or 12 months in bulk at a discounted price. A year subscription costs just £50, which is pretty crazy for the amount you get. I mean, if we were to do the maths, it's £4.16 and a bit a month for 826 games as of right now. So that's 198.5 games per Great British Pound, or just over two games a penny. Two games for a penny! That's 30 games for the price of a Freddo bar. If you don't know what a Freddo bar is, or if you don't know how much it costs, um, a roll of quarters will get you two months PlayStation Now, which is like 1,652 games. Wait. It's pretty insane value, is what I'm trying to say, on just a cost per game basis. PlayStation Now is the best of the bunch. And did I mention it's on PC, and it's all streaming, and the streaming is actually pretty good. So it is pretty much just a case of find a game click on it, wait a minute, and you're good to go. Or you can download all your games on your PS4 console, that's also an option. So if you thought I was going to actually sit here and list out all 826 games, then you're sadly mistaken. There's actually already a video that covers every game on PlayStation Now, so you can go watch that if you want, but it didn't keep my attention for too long. I don't even think it kept the attention of the guy making it. Pure Paul, pure Poldum, and pure chess. Uh, Quantum Theory couldn't get into this game, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, R-Type Dimensions! So, let's start with the newcomers to the PS Now 2020 game list, added in March. Um, there are 11 in total, and 3 kind of big ones, so I'll start with those. Control is the one a lot of people have been excited about. You fight an interdimensional force with a range of telekinetic powers. I've only played a few hours so far, but I know already that you should just forget about this gun and what you want to be doing is you're picking up this thing here and just hurling it at this guy's face. Just, that's the core concept. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the third installment in the prequel trilogy and offers a great setting in the depths of the Peruvian jungle. But the story, combat and traversal are very much middle of the road and Lara ends up stuck between the thrill-seeking explorer of old and the young gritty teenager that started this reboot. When you combine them, it makes for a kind of underwhelming conclusion to the Lara Croft origin story. Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, is the sequel to the inglorious and exuberant Nazi-slaying shooter, and this one is even more over the top than the first. Not once does it stop to question the violence of the resistance, even though it honestly kind of makes the Nazis look compassionate in comparison. <laughs> Okay, I... I take that back. I guess when the Third Reich are the villains, you can make a game as brutal as you want, and Wolfenstein 2 definitely finds its energy from that brutality. So they're the main ones, but there are also Dead or Alive 5, NASCAR Heat 3, Knights of Azure 2 and 3, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 13, Tuki Den 2 and Tuki Den Kiwami, and Warriors All-Stars. Just remember that the bigger games won't be on PlayStation Now Forever. Control and Shadow of the Tomb Raider are on there until the 31st of August, so you've got until then to play them. Alright, so that's 11 of 826 covered, but what about everything else? As I said, there's not much point listing off the game list in its entirety, uh, -type um, because I want to give my opinion and help you form your own. So these are my personal highlights from the PS Now 2020 game list. Let's start with the categories on the PlayStation Now app. The main allure of PlayStation Now on PC is that it grants access to PlayStation exclusives that you otherwise couldn't play unless you owned a PS3 or a PS4. Right now, you can play Uncharted The Lost Legacy, originally announced as DLC for Uncharted 4, The Lost Legacy became a standalone title. 
and this is the first Uncharted game I've played, and it was a little jarring having that game be the finale to the series. It's rip-roaring, treasure-hunting fun throughout though, which I'm pretty sure is what an Uncharted game is supposed to be. I had a blast playing it, and it packs plenty of adrenaline fueled action into its 7-ish hour runtime. That makes it shorter than other entries in the series, which is to be expected from a story that was originally going to be DLC. It's also a good thing, as you don't have much time left to play it. Lost Legacy leaves PS Now on the 7th of April. So get going. Go. Well not yet. Until Dawn is like being the director of your own teen horror B movie. You take control of a group of friends who return to this big, spooky, remote log cabin in the mountains. That's huge red flag number one. Exactly one year after, two of the group went missing, and that's huge red flag number two. There's plenty of tension, mystery, and jump scares, and your actions decide who lives and who dies. Horizon Zero Dawn is another game with a tremendous atmosphere. The Embrace is a beautifully designed world that somehow perfectly blends machinery and Celtic warrior tribes. I found the stealth and the combat, which are Horizon Zero Dawn's main gameplay mechanics, to be a little bit thin, but it's still worth exploring the Embrace to have a go taking down these giant machines and admiring their spectacle. Horizon Zero Dawn leaves PS Now on the 7th of April as well. Hey, have you guys heard about this game called Dark Souls? Of course you have. It's the best game of its genre. It, it defined a genre. It's just so freaking hard that everyone loves it. We, we just love having games that are so hard they make you want to pick your fork up off the table and just drive it into the side of your head, don't we? We love that. Fucking brilliant. Well, Bloodborne is the spiritual successor to Dark Souls, tweaking the setting and some of the gameplay mechanics, but keeping things largely the same. So, it's still bloody hard. Which is great! And you already knew that, because everyone knows about Dark Souls. Who hasn't heard of Dark Souls, man? Who hasn't even played Dark Souls before? Beyond Two Souls is a bit of a tough one to review in 2020. At the time, it was a technical marvel for the PS3, but the realistic visuals don't hold up so well by today's standards. And Beyond Two Souls is defined by its visuals. More of an interactive piece of cinema than a game with, you know, gameplay. Rather than make conscious decisions yourself, you're guiding the characters through and just watching what plays out a lot of the time. But if the cinematic fidelity of Beyond has faded a bit, its artistic creativity is still there, and it still tells an emotional story um, accented by Ellen Page's motion capture debut, which is a really good one. <laughs> God, it's really good. The Last of Us was Naughty Dog's move from No Frills Tomb Raiding of Uncharted to post-apocalyptic dystopia, and it was an absolute triumph. The Last of Us is technically a zombie game, but it focuses on the throes of survival and life after the apocalypse, and central to this is the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Unfortunately, this one isn't the PS4 remastered version, but this game still looks great on PS3, even seven years later. It's one of the biggest and best PlayStation exclusives out there, so if you haven't played it yet, now's your chance, especially given the current state of affairs we're in. Because this, you know, this could be us in a couple months. Were you sick? No, of course not. How do you know? <laughs> Just saying. Arcade games are perfect to pick up and play, especially when you're streaming games on PlayStation Now. And they don't drain all your money anymore, like when they were in the arcade. Metal Slug was always high on my list of games to play when visiting an arcade. Like all of the others, it's fun and frantic side-scrolling, but I did notice some input lag when trying to move quickly around the map. Um, but fortunately, as I said, you get unlimited continues. Ah uh, yes, PUBG, the grandfather of the battle royale genre. The one that started it all. And that's the only reason it's on this list, to be honest. Personally, I don't find crouch walking around a desert for 20 minutes before getting shot is very fun. Um, also keep in mind you'll need a subscription to PlayStation Plus for this and any game that you want to play online. Sniper Elite 4 is the fourth edition of the slow motion testicle shooting simulator and it has the best slow mo testicle shooting mechanics to date. Ooh, you got him right in the beans. There isn't a platforming category on PS Now, and Limbo is only a platformer in a loose sense, but I wanted to include it because it's fantastic. It's ghostly, gloomy, expressive, and sad, all without a single line of dialogue. 
and I highly recommend it. I want to preface this genre by saying that all this footage is from me streaming games on my PC and fighting games are probably the worst for streaming because you need precise inputs to pull off special moves and combos. In that regard, Mortal Kombat performed the best for me, but I think that's because the moveset is simple and I'm bad at fighting games. Street Fighter 4 Ultra felt kind of messy because I'm streaming, but also because the moveset is more complex and I'm bad at fighting games. That's going to be the theme across the board for beat-em-up genre, I think. If you have a PS4 console, you can download games, so you're going to avoid this issue. But as good as they are independently, all the games in this genre have an asterisk by them. Now don't let the name of this category put you off, there are actually some very good games in here. Overcooked 2 is culinary chaos that's best experienced with friends, even if there's a risk that you're not still friends by the end because, well, I thought I was, I know I was the one chopping onions. You're supposed to be sautéing them. No, get, why are you in, why are you get up my personal space? Get over there. Get, just play up the food. There are lots of Lego game options here, which I'm actually a huge fan of. The best of the lot has to be Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Like Overcooked, you have to know the risks of playing. The Complete Saga is in the BD era of Lego games, which stands for Before Dynamic Split Screen. BD confines you to the borders of your TV screen, meaning both of you have to go everywhere together. So keep that in mind, because my sister never listened to me, no matter how many times I told her that we need to go over this way. Get, just get over this way. There's a decent choice of racing games, but I feel like most of these are going to provide the same experience, apart from Crazy Taxi. I'm putting Sonic Generations here as well, even though it's not in this category. It's not the best of the Sonic entries, but it's the best one on PS Now, and it's worth playing just to relive the classic Sonic levels on an updated engine. I hate this genre definition because it's such a broad term that you end up with so many different kind of games here. There are some fantastic classic adventure games like the Monkey Island franchise and Grim Fandango, games with sharp writing and puzzles that require thinking outside of the box. And there are great action games here too, like, well, a lot of the stuff I've already mentioned. Horizon Zero Dawn, Uncharted, Control, take your pick, really. What I want to know is, why aren't action and adventure just separate genres? You wouldn't bundle together horror films and historical dramas just because it's alliterative. Even if Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Downton Abbey would be pretty good. I thought I'd be better prepared for this genre, to be honest, but I haven't heard of 80% of these games. I liked Overlord when it was released, but I can't say it's aged very well or I particularly want to go back there. There are the obvious choices here, like Bloodborne, Elder Scrolls 4, Fallout, but I don't know about the rest. I mean, wait, Fat Princess Adventures? <laughs> Okay, um, this actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. It's nothing special, but it's not awful. So, yeah, go play Fat Princess Adventures if you want. Oh, I just, I just don't know why they bother with this genre. I don't hate sports games, but subscription services so far put up such measly offerings in this genre. Like, oh, should we play some Don Bradman Cricket 14? Oh, how about Yama Yama? Oh, what about Champion Jockey, G1 Jockey and Gallop Race? Wait, why is Tropico 5 a sports game? Civilization Revolution was the first Civ game on consoles and I did feel like it dumbed down the UI a bit. Um, and it made me feel like the series is definitely made for PC, which is annoying because I was playing on PC, but PlayStation now forces you to use a controller but the gameplay still has everything you want from a Civilization game, and it's a really good entry point into the series for newcomers. Wait, why is Farming Simulator 2015 a strategy game? <laughs> so there are all your genres. Um, they don't offer very many, and after that it goes into alphabetized lists of games, which I'm not gonna go through. So instead, I'm gonna give you a couple more honorable mentions that I think are worth playing. Persona 5 isn't in the RPG category for some reason, Perhaps because Persona 5 is arguably the quintessential JRPG and there's a stark difference between the two. I've never played a game in the Persona franchise and truth be told, I haven't finished Persona 5 yet because it's 96 hours long. But every moment I have played is unashamedly soaked in Japanese style from the animations to the voice acting to the menus to the turn-based combat and 
I've enjoyed all of it and I'm hoping to finish it in the next four to eight months. I don't want to call this one of Ubisoft's lesser known entries, but it's not up there with the likes of Assassin's Creed or Far Cry, probably because it's not a blatant cash cow that's milked once a year. For Honor's combat mechanic is actually unique and really intuitive with fights based around hitting and blocking in the right direction. This makes for dramatic one-on-one -on -one fights, but that dissipates as soon as another person joins in. I must admit I'm saying all this from memory. Uh, they might have fixed this since I last played the game near its release, but I wouldn't know because I couldn't access the servers on PlayStation Now. The previously dead and now revived Telltale games are best known for their Walking Dead series, and for good reason. They're some of the best examples of branching narrative, that. bolstered with very human characters trying to survive in a zombie wasteland. The next project Telltale worked on post Walking Dead Season 1 was The Wolf Among Us, and this one added a twist on the classic fairy tale setting, with characters like Snow White, the Mad Hatter, and the Big Bad Wolf living under the facade of humanity in New York. The Wolf Among Us solidified Telltale's talent for narrative-driven games, and a sequel is now on the way after a new company bought out Telltale and offered previous staff some freelance positions. Journey should not offer much. It's a mere skeleton of a game, letting you do little more than walk and jump through vast burning deserts. It shouldn't offer much, but its skeleton is wrapped in such awe and mystique that it's one of the most impulse-driven and immersive experience I've ever had in a video game. And it does all of that in just 90 minutes. So this, this is the one. This is the one I want you to play on PlayStation Now if you haven't already. Or even if you have, go and play it again. Go and make a cup of tea, sit down for an hour and a half and play Journey because it's fantastic. A large portion of the PlayStation Now games are PS2 and PS3 games. There are far too many to mention. But my three best PS3 games are Journey, The Last of Us, and Red Dead Redemption. That's it. I'm not telling you anything more about them. You go find out yourself. It's deserts, it's zombies, and it's cowboys. That's all you need to know. You go, go and play them. And my three best PlayStation 2 games are Shadow of the Colossus, The Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, and Ico. Big statues, big boss, big puzzles. What more do you need to know? go. Let's remember that this is my opinion, and surprisingly I haven't played through all 826 games on PS Now yet, so I'll admit it's an incomplete one. So let me know down in the comments below if I've missed anything, or let me know what you've played, and tell me if it's as good as Journey, or as bad as G1 Jockey Racer. Hopefully you've realised through this video that PlayStation Now has a lot to offer, but that shouldn't stop us wanting more. And it probably doesn't because that's something we're all very good at, isn't it? Wanting more, just more of everything. But also, PlayStation have to compete with other services. Um, so hopefully games like this um, will come on the service soon, hopefully throughout the year or something like that. Or there's remastered versions of this. God, I hate doing that. And there's always the chance that games like God of War and Uncharted 4 come back onto the service for those that might have missed it last time. God, I hope so. So that's about 50 games that I've covered. I'm starting to realise that these definitive list videos are pretty difficult. <laughs> so we've only scratched the surface, but we've got to think how deep do we really want to go? What might we find down there? Fat Princess Adventures may have been a welcome surprise, but I also think it was an exception. And there are games on there, old sports games like F1 2014, is anyone really playing that, or is that just on there to boost the numbers so Sony can say the service has over 800 games? Only time will tell, of course, but my aim is to play through the entire PlayStation Now library to help me and you and us decide whether the subscription is worth it and how it compares to the other ones that are out there. Because I'm doing this for all video game subscriptions. So stay tuned for more and please subscribe to the channel. It's the best way you're going to keep up to date with all this content. I'm almost at 50 subscribers, which shouldn't mean a lot to me, but it does. Um, so I really appreciate it if you could help me get to that number. I'm very close. I might have been there by the time you watch this. But don't let that stop you. I also want to give a shout out to my boy Cameron Cox, aka Mac Backwards, for lending me this camera so I don't have to record on my phone anymore. And as you can see, the difference is night and day. So thank you, mate, and go check out his stuff. He's an excellent videographer if you need some video work doing. Um, and he also 
spits hot fire. So go check him out. He's on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, all the usual. I'll put links down below. So thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. And I actually am going to try and up the quantity of videos now that none of us are allowed to go outside. Can't guarantee that the quality is going to be better, but there'll be more of it. S sorry, or you're welcome. You decide. See ya. <laughs>